1933, FDR promised action and action now. With 25% of workers unemployed, he promised he would use the power of the federal government in what he deemed a war against unemployment. And this is where my grandfather came in. Harry Hopkins' goal as FDR's Federal Relief Administrator remained consistent throughout the decade. He believed it was the federal government's responsibility to provide, work, to provide for workers who could no longer support themselves or their families. During the first 100 days, at the urging of the president, Congress passed the FERA, the Federal Emergency Relief Act, with an initial appropriation of $500 million and established the FERA, the Federal Emergency Relief Administration. When the president tapped Hopkins to run it, he told the Washington newcomer two things, get relief out fast to those who need it and pay no attention to politics or politicians. The FERA handed out money to destitute Americans because Hopkins were starving, because Americans were starving to death in the United States. This was of course, direct relief, cash, the dole. But very soon Hopkins and the president realized that people wanted the dignity of a job. They wanted to work for a wage. So the FERA created jobs, mostly construction and infrastructure work to let them work off their relief payments. One had to be on the relief rolls to get an FERA job. This was better than cash relief, but it was not ideal. In November, 1933, it became increasingly clear to Hopkins that the FERA's work relief program was not putting enough people to work. Anticipating a dangerously cold winter, Hopkins on November 9th, 1933, presented the president with a plan whereby the government would become the main contractor for jobs. It was a wild idea, but FDR signed an executive order creating the temporary civil work administration, the CWA, with Hopkins at its head. Using $400 million of FERA funds and 350 million from Harold Ickes Public Works Administration, the PWA, Hopkins again worked fast, cut through red tape, and 11 days later, by November 20th, he had transferred all reliefers to CWA roles. CWA jobs paid the prevailing wage. Anyone could apply for a CWA job. You did not have to be on the relief rolls. CWA jobs were real jobs for real wages, not emergency relief, and people knew it. It put 4 million people to work on approximately 4,000 projects within four weeks and within two months had mobilized as many people as were called to the colors during the First World War. By the spring of 1934, over 200,000 projects had been initiated and the CWA became the nation's largest employer, spending almost $1 billion. Always meant to be temporary, the CWA ended in the spring of 34. Its work programs were folded back into the FERA. Still, more than 11 million workers were unemployed and on the relief rolls. 80% of them were fully employable. In the State of the Union speech in January 34, President Roosevelt said that, quote, continued dependence on relief induces a spiritual and mental disintegration fundamentally destructive to the national fiber. To dole out relief in this way is to administer a narcotic, a subtle destroyer of human spirit. He said work must be found for the able-bodied but destitute workers. Hopkins was also convinced that this was absolutely essential for the nation's economic health and was also consistent with American values. He insisted that the opportunity to work was an inalienable right for all. Hopkins' plan for a permanent federal jobs program was unfortunately eliminated from the economic security bill. It was too radical. The president instead, called for a temporary government work program and encouraged Congress to pass the Emergency Relief Appropriation Act in 1935. It allotted $4 billion to provide jobs for those on relief on the dole and created the WPA, the Works Progress Administration. Roosevelt appointed Hopkins to lead this ambitious employment and infrastructure program. Over its eight years of existence, the WPA put roughly eight and a half million Americans to work and spent $10.7 billion. Perhaps best known for its public works projects, the WPA also sponsored projects in the arts, 
the agency employed tens of thousands of actors, musicians, writers, and other artists. You can go on the Living New Deal website, livingnewdeal.org slash map to see the thousands of WPA programs without, throughout the United States. You can see that no city or town was untouched by WPA projects. WPA workers built more than 4,000 new school buildings, erected 130 new hospitals, laid 9,000 miles of storm drains and sanitary sewer lines, built 20, 29,000 new bridges, et cetera, et cetera. Many more useful projects. Hopkins, ever the optimist said, I believe that full employment can be attained within the framework of our traditional democratic processes and that every man able and willing to work has a right to the opportunity to secure the reasonable necessities of life. But not only would government rescue, not only would government jobs rescue unemployed workers, they would boost consumerism and aid in the national economic recovery. <laughs> 